this episode, we're going to be talking about acting. We're going to be talking about the differences between screen, uh, so film acting, and theatre, so stage acting. Uh, so for all you actors out there, hopefully you get something out of this one. Hell yeah. Or you can relate in some way. And hopefully this discussion offers you some sort of value and some sort of further insight into the myths, into the, you know, the unknowns, the uncertainties and the knowns and the familiars of the two. Sounds like a plan. If that makes sense. Hopefully it does make sense to you by the end of this discussion. So a little bit of background. So personally, I'm an actor and a director. I've mainly focused my work entirely on screen. I have not done theater at all as an actor. I've I've only been a stage manager in the past. I've done a few little high school theater mm, shows. Stage manager. A couple musicals and oh. and I was back then not really interested in acting. I was really just interested in getting to know the the theater a little bit. So I put my hand up as a stage manager. But that's kind of as far as my knowledge goes in the theater. But screen wow. acting, have been doing that for quite some time now. Directed about four films, acted in a handful of them, some features as well. So I'll try my best to provide the screen acting side of things. Okay. And then jazz. The backgrounds, the stage acting and the, uh, the musical theater, stage performance, begun at around 14, 15 I'd say was the first time I hit the stage in front of a big audience performing as a leading character mm-hmm. uh, with you know dialogue and songs and, and, and a costume and a, a person to embody and become over time. And that whole process I just found incredibly rewarding. Mm. It, was, it was quite monumental. I think it was quite a task, especially when you're young. Yeah. These things seems so big because you're given a 50 60 page script and you're told that you know in the next few months you are to commit this to memory and then you know after one or two of those months you're already starting to rehearse those scenes live in their entirety with other performers and um, you know workshop voices workshop you know the the scene and how it's going to flow and your intentions for that scene and it is, yeah, it's, it's a large, it's a large undertaking. It is definitely. such a monumental task. I mean, I can't even imagine having to learn 60 pages of script when I can, I can barely <laughs> memorize 10. <laughs> well, you only really have to know your own scenes, but yeah, certain people memorize the whole, hey, when you've done the show that many times, like if it's a long season, the people that do theater and, and musical theater, obviously professionally and, and two of the same show, like two, 300 times. They would know every role. They but, would know But that's an interesting thing, right? I mean, in theater, yeah. this might be a myth. I mean, you can, you can bust that if yeah. possible. But, I mean, personally, I would, I would get sick and tired of the same content. Like if I've memorized a 60-page script and I know that I'm going to be doing this show a hundred times, personally, that isn't as much of a, a really interesting journey to me as, say, doing a scene maybe 10 times because that's a film requirement. You might do three, four different angles and have to repeat that same scene six to 10 times, if that, and then that's it. You never do it ever again. Because once the movie's done, you don't ever really revisit that scene. So what what are your thoughts on that? I mean, is is there that boredom development over time well look i can only comment from someone who has done the same show around 20 20 to 30 of the same show that's still a lot i think around 20 so the musicals because now i've obviously transitioned to to film Mm. a film actor and creating things in that medium uh i i ceased the sort of theater work and the musical theater stuff a few years back now but having that grounding having that initial training and that under your belt that seasoning mm. you know to be a to be quoted by directors that have direct that are very well known in australia and, and people that have you know directed 
hundreds of shows in their professional lives to be quoted as a veteran of the stage at yeah. you know 15 16 by directors like that was sort of all the confidence i needed to <laughs> say, That's okay this is good this has been rewarding and we'll get back to that the rewarding the all the rewarding things that come of investing so much into yeah. a live performance uh but what did you say again? I forgot. <laughs> I'll just count. Boredom. Oh, yeah. But getting back to boredom, the monotony, the cycle of it all, uh, I can only comment as someone who's done like 20 of the same shows back to back because a lot of the musicals and a lot of the, the bigger performances I did, they were rehearsed for months, but there might have only been four to five shows, you know, mm. two special premiere events and then four to five shows that were you know, sellable and viable tickets. Yeah. The tickets were sold to the general public and that was open to anyone. Um, so all of those shows were not never got boring because I only ever got to do you know, five or six really good full runs in costume in its entirety with a live audience. So that was never boring, even though it was the same show on the same. That That isn't boring because if you love the story and you love the character, I think it would take a lot longer to be bored. Yeah. Uh, but there wasn't one in particular that was sort of a, it was more of a kid's show and um, it was sort of not as not as high budget, not as high quality as some of the other big musicals. And we did 20, 20 or 30 of those in a row and it was like two shows a day for like four or five day weeks and it was that was um that was that was funny but yeah by the end of it I definitely wasn't sad it was over right uh but that might have just been the production value as well and and what that particular show had to offer uh so I'm not sure you look at people who make it a career and they don't seem to get bored do they mm. or is that the money talking yeah, that's so true. So it's like if you were offered a nine-month contract to, to play like your dream role four no. to five days a week. That wouldn't really get boring you, very quickly. <laughs> I mean, even if it does, though, you've still got two, three days off that week to reset. Well, the, it's like a job then, isn't it? It's a job. I mean, it's like going to a nine-to-five or so, you get to do what you're passionate so, yeah, about. You, you might get a little bored occasionally after like three months of doing it, but then... You recenter yourself. Mm. You say, "Wow, how how grateful am I to to get to do this and get paid so much for it?" You know, and yeah, true. All these people wish they had the opportunity, and also you're giving. And again, because it is a live setting, unlike a film, you have you're there with the audience, and you're giving, and then you're receiving. At yeah, the end. you get the applause, you get... 100%. Mm. And that's what the theatre performers do it for. They do it for that real time. I've put this effort in here and now. This is what I've got. This is what we've made together. Here you go. Mm. And the audience gives back that love, gives back that appreciation and energy. And if you're getting that exchange multiple times a week, yeah, it doesn't really matter if the story's the same or the characters and the lines are the same because you're... A storyteller you're telling a story you're communicating a story with the power and the energy that you have to offer and you're giving that to people and they're giving you back their energy and adoration and you know, respect you don't really get that in a film at all i mean you don't get you it's might cold, get isn't it you might get an applause at the end of a really great take but maybe maybe if you're, if you're john snow and it's your last day on set maybe maybe and that's i think if whenever i've seen a theater show or a musical you know you almost can feel the love at the end of a show when when the audience stands up and they're all giving them their their made their raging applause and so forth and you kind of want to put yourself in those actors' shoes and you're like wow that that must feel amazing mm. like oh it does you know does. you've nailed your performances <laughs> that night and then all of a sudden you get to bow in front of an amazing audience that has participated and enjoyed your, you know, the whole show. And it's just, it feels so energetic. Whereas yes. a film set can sometimes feel a bit dead. <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> it's almost emotionless. Cold. Yeah. But I mean, in a way I, I do love it because having that repetition of scenes, especially if I'm just an actress and I'm not there as a director as well, uh, I can, I can kind of, 
make sure that I give it my best shot. So for that those few times. For those few times, you know, Before and I can almost bored. mold the the performance to get, well, one, what the director wants, but two, if, like something that I'm happy with as to well. Also st- to also stay fresh as well. Yeah, maybe. and whereas on the th- if you were to do it in a theater, you know, in some sort of play or a musical, you kind of only get one shot, which is the, the, the time when you're on stage and, and you have that performance to do right then and there. But again, that's what can make theatre so exciting and not boring mm. because even though it's the same show, same characters, same scenes every night. You never say the same thing it? twice, right? No. Well, there, in the same way. There's always room for impro. Yeah. One line could slightly change. You could stumble the wording or mm. you could be late for a certain entrance and then you, you come on a, a different side of the stage or something goes wrong and that can add to the show and make it slightly different. And even though, oh, it's a mistake, for the performers, that can add an extra layer of excitement or, That's oh, I've, I've had to cover here or something happened. We had to adjust the scene on the fly and that could be really interesting. So Yeah, wow. Yeah. The improv element. I mean, film has the, a little bit of that, the risk but is it is a lot more strict. Negating the boredom. Yeah, that's true. And and also, I mean, you do have that that element of practice. I mean, obviously, before you get onto stage, you do the theater show at least you know half a dozen times. Mm. You'll you get to develop better relationships with the cast. Whereas on a film set, sometimes you don't even meet your other cast members. I've been on a on a film set before where I've done a short film and. I, by the time it was my turn to do the lines, the other actor had finished and had gone home. Wow. So then I didn't actually have someone to act alongside with. And we were meant to do a phone call, you know, like th- these are kind of interesting things, right? There's just theater does give you a lot more of that playfulness. Yeah. You kind of get to play with the cast, play with the crew, you know, whereas like film, you get on the set, you kind of have the, that relationship building period, but it's really just do your lines as many times as you as as what is needed sometimes is you only do them once and then you move on yeah and and yeah it's a completely different experience i feel like theater has everything going for it in a way then it's got the journey it's got the hard work mm-hmm. it's got the result yeah. at the end whereas film it's just all about the result right and so, sometimes that can take months. So you might not even get congratulated or high-fived or yeah. or whatever by like an audience member until maybe like a year down the track. But you see Some what I'm saying? Some movies take forever like, for post-production. Reward-wise. Like yeah. if you go into a big stage production, whether it's a musical or a play, you put the, you put the hard work in. You yeah. put that memory in. You know, you memorize your stuff. You put the work in. You put the passion in. Mm. And then you get that experience and then you get that energy return. Whereas film, it's it's not really about just the, the applause at the end. Yeah. It's just about the end result. And and nothing else is completely necessary. Whereas in stage, every part of that journey is equally as necessary. Like the hard work, the middle part and the ending the ending of and it. And everyone has to work together as Whereas well. Whereas a film, someone could come in you know, uh, on the day of shooting yeah, for one scene and have a one-page script yeah. and say it's some notable actor. They come in for one day yeah. and they get, you know, a couple of million dollars for this <laughs> sheet of paper that's given to them on the day for making some guest appearance in this film. There's no elbow grease at the start. There's no, like, bonding with the team. There's no True. building the journey and no big payoff. It's just about the result of what that looks like on screen. It feels like theater so it's, provides it's very different. It feels like theater provides a lot more room for kind of playfulness and 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 flexibility whereas film is very much an art of perfection. You want the perfect take, you want the perfect shot, yeah. you want the perfect performance. Yeah. And some directors are known to do hundreds of takes in order to get that. Yeah. And some will only do one because they're more of a fan of kind of that serendipitous sort of performance that you get from actors maybe on the first run. But in theater, if you've practiced the lines already 10 times as a unit, like with all the other cast members, then 
how much room for flexibility does that provide when you're on the stage performing it in front of the audience? Is it very different from your experience from practice to performance? Uh, from experience, again, I would say the first couple of performances, uh, it's sort of an agreed on thing within you know, the theater industry. Usually the actors will agree to sort of play it as safe as possible on the first couple of runs because you okay. want that preview show to go well. Mm. You want all the people that got free tickets to, to come and see the preview or the premiere night, you want that to be good. Yeah. You don't really want to get panned, so you want to do your best not to take any risks and right. to, to be as true to the material you've rehearsed as you possibly can. Smooth sailing. That's mm. what you want. No funny stuff. Right. And then as the season goes on, you can find room for improvise, you know, okay. improvised things. Uh, again, there's back and forth with the director usually if, if – you know, a show goes on for a couple of weeks, it's a, that's probably a good time to start adding in little changes, tweaking lines, tweaking things. Right. That's sort of, from my experience anyhow, it might be different if you if you speak to like a Ramin Karimlu. Yeah. Maybe we get him on, we like Skype him on a... One that would be great. Wow. He we would, just need a lot more listens He first. would have, <laughs> a, a, yeah, a far more uh, in-depth perspective of that. But... From my perspective, yeah, I would say that the first couple of performances, you want to be really spot on, you want to be really safe, and you want to nail the show, and yeah. you want to make everyone happy. you got to keep the investors happy, you right. know what I mean? Yeah. You <laughs> agreed right. on the release date, you put out the product, you don't want any bugs or glitches in the game, you wanted a, a working product. Yeah. And then as it goes on, you can figure out with your other cast members how comfortable you are with everything. And then, yeah, you can tweak things. You can add in little fun things here and there to keep the show a living, breathing organism that, nice. that still evolves and, and changes. So one thing that I've always kind of been interested in knowing about is when you keep the, the, the kind of the theatre show really fast moving and, and you start to introduce some more improv, what happens if say you mess up a line or another actor messes up a line because they just couldn't keep track of where the improv was going or it kind of took them by surprise how does a theater show recover from that and how do you do that kind of swiftly in your own experience yeah so like if if someone has slightly changed a line or maybe someone's forgotten something mm. and then it's it's relied upon another actor improvising something to fill that gap Right. Or to like fix in real time. So you just you get say. really good at improvisation when you're a theater There's, actor. Yeah, say if someone has a misstep and the other actor can tell it's not on purpose, there's, there's always a, because it's theater and it's not film, you know, we can be like, you know, I, I love you. And, and the other person will be like, I can't believe yeah, okay, I got gotcha. you. Right, Whereas so there's film, like an eye movement. In film, that'd be retake. What are you doing with your eyes? But in theatre, even though we're acting something, we can still communicate. Right, so it's it's in the eyes or body we language. We can still secretly communicate with each other when it's on stage. Right, because there okay. are, there's a way an actors can communicate to the other one, oh, I'm in trouble here, or sorry, I've, I've buggered us up here, or sorry, I've buggered you up. Right, or, okay. Was that right, or... You've skipped that, but don't worry, I'll figure something out. Yeah. There are ways. And so we sort of telepathically and subtle eye signals. Right, because uh, that's very different in yeah, film. Yeah, and, and there's just the feeling as well when you're in a scene with someone. And very quickly, uh, you know, the other person will, will usually try and fill the gaps or plug the holes mm. and... If they can't, sometimes they can't, sometimes people panic, sometimes one person panics okay. when the other one's buggered something up and then the other one sees that and goes, oh, no, I've, I've buggered it up and I'm not with a veteran that's as good or better than me. I'm, I'm with someone that's slightly weaker or has less practice Experience. and less confidence to yeah. plug holes and improvise and fix scenes in real time right. uh, in, a, in a live theatre setting. And then they can sort of lose confidence in themselves and oh, then no. yeah it can drag i mean but that's all part of it right I, I had a show once where that happened only once funnily enough 
But I mean, well, we have wants. to remember I... that the audience doesn't know the lines unless Ex it's like yeah. a super famous yeah. exactly. show. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So in a way, you kind of have to remember that. Yes. And, and And I think that kind of is a really good segue to... One of the things that I think would freak me out is the whole stage fright thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, I've I've done I've done little speaking in in events where I've gotten I've got to host and and I kind of just did a little few things here and there in front of maybe a couple hundred people. I mean, nothing too big. But how do you kind of deal with that? Yeah, that anxiety that well, comes from a stage play. Because, for example, for me, when I'm on I'm on a film set. There could be 50 people on set or 100 people on set. For some reason, I don't get nervous. But if I, I could just go to a, a, a show like at the hotel or like at an art center or when I was watching Phantom of the Opera and I almost felt like nervous and I was the audience member. You, you know? really don't get nervous on a, fi on a big Not film really. set? Not really. How no. come? Well, I, I Even guess a I, little bit. I guess I kind of get a little bit of like the butterflies because okay. I'm excited, but... I kind of feel like I'm in my element and yeah. I, I don't feel as nervous, but I get hella nervous before an in-person audition. <laughs> so that, I think that's my, that's kind of where I get my anxiety from. And it's, sometimes it's just based on fear, but stage fright is something very common. So do you, do you experience that yourself? Oh, oh, back in the day, I, I miss it. I just wish there was something so good around here to, to, to get my teeth stuck into that would actually be worthy of the investment of of getting back on stage again and learning a big script. and you, know. you get emotionally invested. There, and, yeah. Let me tell you, there is <laughs> nothing like getting up on stage, going from like behind the curtain, the black curtains, to getting out there for the first time, the, the first show of the week or the first show of the, the day or whatever. And you've got thousands of people in the audience oh, and you've, you've, you've had a sneaky look oh, behind the curtain no. before you've gone out. All the music's building up. The crowd's applause is dying down. The music's starting up and you're about to go out there oh, on gosh. stage. The light spotlight's going to hit you and you're going to start the show and you're going to do a scene or a monologue or start a song. And there's nothing but a big crowd of thousands of people and you're the first thing to come out and welcome them. Oh, and that my pressure... God. And that am I gonna? When you go out, as soon as you go out from that behind the stage, from that black curtain, and you're thinking, "What's my first word? What's my first word? What am I going to say? I forget oh what I'm going to say. I forget my first word. <laughs> or what's my first word so I can remember the rest of the line or the rest of the song?" And and you you're just completely blank until the bar you have to start singing or until that musical beat comes in and you have to be like, ladies and gentlemen, welcome this evening. I've got a grandstand. I've got a big band. I've got a giant hand. I've got a... <laughs> oh, summer my gosh. You know, literally, just on your mind, it's there's nothing. And it's blank until you've got a... That is... Yeah, that wow. is very frightening. But it's like an incredible adrenaline thing. And it's like, man, I could just go blank and die on my bottom here. Yeah, and that's people's first impression. And <laughs> oh I've just gosh. made a fool of myself in front of thousands of people and I've wasted their time and they're going to feel like they're ripped off because I've paid money to come and see something and I've yeah. come out straight away and failed them. That is pretty overwhelming, but it's also pretty fun. It's wow. Like, it's like <laughs> I'm some not people, sure if that's psychopathic. Some people, or... <laughs> some people want to jump out of, you know, skydiving planes and stuff and just risk their life. That's yeah. how people get a thrill. They just randomly risk their physical body. They're like, oh, I could like kill my physical body by doing this silly thing. Yeah. To me, that's just dumb. That's, that's not a thrill. That's not a challenge at all because mm. anyone can do it. It's just silly. Doing something like that, a theater show like that, where you have a real, real fear, genuine, because you know you don't want to let all these people down. A yeah. real thrill. That's a real thrill, I think. So, is there something you tell yourself it's to like great. manage that that you I know the, the butterflies and the anxiety that comes from before you do those first things? Or do you have a self, you know, kind of a self chat or something like that? Yes. Well, I do personally. Yeah. What do you? What do you <laughs> Everyone's do? going to be different again. Yeah, Some people won't. Uh, when you get confident enough with a show. So you know the lines. You can sort of just walk in on it at any time. Right. And there isn't much of that anymore. But that's a dangerous point. Okay. Because then you get too relaxed. Okay. And then it's autopilot. 
and there's a healthy medium. There's a healthy medium when you're starting a live show. The first few shows, you're, you're going to be butterflies every time. You're going to think you're going to forget everything as soon as you walk out on stage mm. and, and just not know what to say or what to sing. And then, you know, a week or two down the track, you're just like you're on your phone the second before you're about to go out you're on Facebook, so I'm listening to some <laughs> oh music. Oh, go out? Okay, cool. Okay. And then you just so go out. So you get out. desensitized to it the more you, you exactly. do it. Exactly. And that's, that's actually when you'll make mistakes because you think it's too easy because you've done it and it's comfortable and it's enjoyable and it's sort of, it's like when you go on the Superman escape ride or something and at Movie World. And you've done it 10 times in a row. The first time you go on that day, you're pooing your pants. You're like, your heart's <laughs> in your chest. You're like, whoa, I'm Superman. I'm actually flying. Whoa, oh my God. The fifth time you've gone on it, you're like. Yeah, you kind of sleep in on it. It's a relaxing little like chill out session. Yeah. It's like a meditation. And so you don't want that. When you're going on stage and your job is to tell a story and communicate that with all your energy and enthusiasm to a crowd that's paid money to do that. Yeah. So there's a healthy medium. You've got to, you have to get to the point where it's autopilot and it's easy and it's relaxed, but you've still got to tell yourself, I'm crap. You know, I'm not worthy. If I lose my step at any moment, everyone's going to laugh at me. So and, you actually have a negative narrative? I've got to, I've got to narrative? prove myself. Like, I'm terrible. I have to do this to prove myself right. to so the world. So then it's a challenge for you to overcome. Yeah. So you've it's got to stay humble and put yourself down to stay mentally aware enough and almost induce a state of fear and adrenaline manually if you're not getting that anymore in order to do it well. Because right. then you're just sleepwalking. See, I'm, I'm, so it's a hard balance to I'm keep. I'm the complete opposite. You know, like if really? I if I have some sort of anxiety related to say an audition or something like that, I I have to be positive to myself. I can't just be like I suck. I I'm this. I'm that. Because I mean, at the end of the day, hundreds of experts have said. I mean, you can read a thousand nonfiction books, and most of them will say that your thoughts are who you are. So I, I'm a very strong believer in that. So if I'm just about to go on to set. For you can guarantee that in the minutes before that, I'm telling myself I'm the best actress in the world. I am a fabulous actress. I know my lines 110%. I'm going to give a killer performance. I'm going to get an Oscar one day. And you kind of have that that self-narration. Like, wow. You know, that's how I, I so amp myself up. So that works for you. That works for me. But... It, <laughs> but then that's film it's as well. It's an interesting so it is thing with theater. Yeah. But I mean, for you, you're saying that if yeah. I just talk myself down, then I'll 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 be like, okay, the challenge accepted, and I'm gonna make an amazing, you, you know, outcome out of that. But I'm the complete opposite. Mm. I need positive reinforcement. Otherwise, I just make myself a wreck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can just that's imagine funny. if I if I told myself right before shooting right before shooting I'm terrible I suck if I'm I don't a, nail I'm this like actor, everyone in the world's gonna think I'm pathetic I would probably cry <laughs> 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 um, but it's it's uh, just I mean again yeah. it's every everyone has a different perspective uh, and like yeah. a thing that works for them um, but I wanted to use this opportunity to segue into another area of theater versus film which is all about kind of what the acting is like mm. in film it's all about acting small Good you point. know every little eye movement is critical yes when you when you are doing your scenes less is more whereas in theater i've heard it's the complete opposite more is more darling yes <laughs> indeed so how does that work in theater and and how have you found transitioning from film to sorry from theater to film well, I learned very, very early in theatre, more. more. More is more. More. Bigger. More. We can always bring it down. More. No, bigger. And what does that mean? As in the movements, the the like how, how large the body motions are? What does that mean? Energy you put in. Projection. Yes, physical assurance. You have to confidently... Be very confident in your own skin, the way you walk, the way you move, the way you position. You talk about film being very fine and very under a microscope compared to theatre. You know, it's bigger. You can you can be more uh, liberal with it. But no, it's just it's just as precise. Okay. Because it mightn't be a close up on the face. Mm. But what else is that actor doing? He's he's standing like this or whatever. 
Yeah, so everything, expression, energy. The first thing you learn when going into theatre, if your director's any good, will be bigger, bolder, brighter, mm. grander. You know, give me more energy. Give me more emotion. Give me more movement. Give me more expression. Show me the pain in your face. Show me the, the joy in your face. Use your face. Use your eyes, which is why a lot of... You know, I can tell theatre actors that are now in film because they have wrinkly faces. And the oh girls gosh. look like five, six years older than they should yeah. because they've used their face a lot. And I still do that a lot as a film actor, you know, I because I'm used to train that way for like 10 years. So yeah. it's going to be in your DNA to an extent and it's hard to get out. But in theatre, you can push the ceiling and then you can bring it down. In film, it's like you just want to keep it on a believable level and mm. then when you need to realism. bring it up. You, yeah, realism. But in theatre, that's not going to translate. That's going to be boring. We're not going to see anything that these you do. If you're a mm. film actor and you think you're the best film actor in the world, oh, my emotion and my subtleties, if you get onto a stage and you do the same thing, sorry, mate, you're boring. No one cares. No one's watching you because you you aren't giving that story to an audience it's far away and really big so everything has to be grander yeah. and then they can bring it down later you, you can't bring a small energy and an actor that's so intricate and and you know oh my performance and all this you can't give them a boost and make them appealing to three thousand people in the room you can you train have to someone act for the person that's all the way at the back as well all the way at the back so you yeah. can train someone to be a big emotional <gasps> You can train someone to do that and have someone that's, you know, the the 3,000th person down the back of the room yeah. watching there and, and they're like this small to them. You know, they're watching them now. Oh, I'm watching your journey and, and they're right. moved. Whereas, yeah, that's you know, true. That's that's in what you film, have to do in theatre. In film it's almost like, yeah, they, they always say less, less is more, less is more, less yeah. is more, but that often isn't defined very well. I mean, when I learned about directing from actually directing scenes that's kind of when i really understood what that meant yes and when you're working with actors they want to achieve a realistic performance but oftentimes what could be realistic is not actually very good looking on camera yes so you have to adjust you know your oh, eyes great point your eyes can't move that much great point whereas if you're if you're really sad or angry at a character or a person in real life and that is the scene in the movie you're actually probably going to play those two things entirely differently. Like what you would do in a real life situation is actually very toned down in the, the, in the film, film, which is in version. the realistic film version. 100%. But when I think about theater, it's all about like overacting. But is yeah. that a myth or is that something else? Look, there are certain styles of theater that rely on overacting and that's like the style. It depends on the show. Right. Depends on the sort of vibe of the production. Uh, a proper theatre actor, though, is completely realistic and completely believable while still being big and mm. over dramatic. And that's how you know you sort of got someone good. Um, seen a couple of plays in Brisbane um, that were just like acting a few mm. years back, and um, the Australian cast, and they had very, the acting style was very large. It was sort of big. It was a little bit, the movements were large, large. the things. But not at, at one moment did I go, oh, this guy's cringe or just this scene is so unbelievable, even though they were large and they were expressive and it was like a dramified, amplified version of what it would be in real life. Mm -hmm. The way they spoke to each other and communicated emotionally was still 100% believable. It was just that the voice was obviously, you know, turned up a little bit, yeah. certain inflections were higher, right. certain things were over-dramatised. But at the same time, they still managed to keep that scene completely believable, which is, I think, what you need to look for, what the people that know what's going on look for in a good theatre production. Amazing. Yeah, so there's, yeah, there's a lot to it, keeping that balance. I think there's there's magical elements to both. And so for... If we were to talk to a film actor who's trying to do theatre, what would you suggest to them? I would say, look, someone that's just doing well in film, 
I would say you probably do have to do some training. Some like theater training yeah. specifically. Even though I, I'm not big on saying, oh, you need to do like acting classes and courses all the time. If you're an actor and, and train, you need to constantly, you know, people say, even if you're a working yeah. actor, you need to still train all the time. Well, I, I, like think, to I do. think there is a bit of that, but I think I like to do. Personally, you and I are very much the the actual. Let's be on set, and I will keep it keep up my skills and improve by watching other actors. Yes, and learning from by that. by actively doing, studying, implementing. Yeah, study, research, implement, do study, research, implement, do. And the people that don't have the luxury to do that, yeah, maybe need to yeah. do the training courses or acting classes or whatever, uh, but. I think for a film actor, because a lot of people can become film actors. Mm. There are people that are models that just become film actors. There yeah. are and with very minimal training, our ex army soldiers. That now that guy, the big dude that's in all those movies. Yeah. What's his name? Star Wars one. He was like an army man or something, and then he randomly got roles in a movie over people that have been doing it for their whole life, and that's all they've ever done. <laughs> Film, I mean, we've already done a, an episode on so, casting. Yeah. It's, it's, so anyone. So check that one out. <laughs> anyone, if they have a good, you know, self-aware perception and charisma and confidence, I think can become a film actor. But in just a film actor that's only done that, coming from something else, going into theatre, mm. I would say you need training. Right. Okay. I, and I would say the same to a theatre actor. So a theatre actor transitioning more to do film needs can't just step into doing movies because they're going to be going. Yeah, it's going to be overacted probably. <laughs> you caught me. You caught me. And that looks great on stage. Yes. And the emotions there but it's and it's gonna completely just look believable. Off on camera. That's not bad acting. It's, it's, that's great, that stuff. Mm -hmm. But on camera, yeah, it looks ridiculous. It looks cringe. Right. So, yeah, for a, for a film actor that's only done film, you, you do need to wet your feet with theatre yep. and then eventually work your way up to doing theatre shows. And then to someone who's only done theatre shows and thinks that they're an actor and they're going to get into films because mm. they're a proper actor and they do plays all the time and they've done musical theatre. It's theater, a completely different But they haven't well. been on set with the likes of Baz Luhrmann and Angelina Jolie and seen it in person and studied what's required and been on this side and that side of the camera Y'all got some work to do. Like yeah. you're not just going to get a role in a movie. Like there's a lot of work to do and there's a lot to understand about the subtleties and the intricacy of film yep. and how you might think the most realistic best acting you can do is the best, but it won't translate to camera at all. It will look ridiculous or cringe and you'll be confused why. You'll think you're a terrible actor. You're not. It's just a different science yeah. and you need to understand why that performance doesn't translate to film. Mm. And that's the same for film actors. Their performances as a subtle film actor is not going to translate to a theatre, to entertaining a room and, and selling out a room sort of thing. Great points. Yeah. It definitely seems like there's a magic to both film and theatre and they require education on both sides to master. So have so, a go at both, Yeah. right? That I think that's what... What, I would love to try theater one day. I haven't had the right project come come to me yet, but it sounds very interesting. And I do love the aspect of that, that almost the congratulations and, and you know, the, the audience response that you would get from performing and giving it your all on that one night and, and doing that over and over again. I can definitely see the appeal. Film also has beautiful elements to it. Really, the crew coming together, the cast coming together. I mean, yes, you might not be on set for many days, but it's a long-term journey that also is very worthwhile. Yeah. So you as listeners, let us know your thoughts. Do Reach both. out. Do, Do both. both. Have you done theater? Have you done film? Let us know and let's have a chat. And we hope that you've learned a little bit about the differences between film and theater. And we hope to catch you in the next one. In the next one. This was the Creative Constitution Podcast. Thank you very much.